When you hit a wall going 50 and you're not wearing a safety belt, your head will fit in the glove box. What do you get when you cross a person not wearing a safety belt with a head-on collision? What? Beats me, but it probably looks like this. What's the first thing that goes through your mind in a head-on if you're not wearing a safety belt? The steering wheel. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Well, I guess that's it. Thank you all for coming. Remember, our next painting is the first Tuesday of next month. Great figures, huh, John? You two guys are a definite hit. Huh? Cruz, Hoffman, De Niro, Larry, Vince. You guys are bigger than big. Huh? I mean, these latest figures don't lie. More and more people are buckling up. Being the consummate artist that you are. I know how dedicated you've been to this project from the very beginning. So I think you deserve a, a week's vacation with pay. A week's vacation? All right. Alcapulco, Maui, Bermuda. Why don't you stop in my office first thing Monday morning, talk details. We'll do donuts, huh? <laughs> Have a nice week. How about double or nothing? What? Double or nothing. Double or nothing says you give us two weeks off if we come up with a way to save twice as many lives a year by Monday. Vince, what are you doing? If we fail, back to bashing the bullseye. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> but make your presentation first thing Monday morning. <laughs> you can really do that. I'll give you a whole month off with pay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, you're fine. Oh, my. <laughs> Sorry about that. Are you crazy? He's ready to give us an extra week off, and you want to gamble it away? No, I'd rather spend a month under a palm tree thinking about all the additional lives we saved by using our heads for something besides highway hockey pucks. Get to the point, Vince. Every week, we have close encounters of the dashboard kind in order to get people to buckle up. But you don't need your high beams to see that for one reason or another, not all people are using safety belts. So I've been thinking. Maybe we can develop something for the people who don't wear their safety belts. Hey, this is great stuff. Now, what I really need to know is what kind of forces we're dealing with at different speeds. Such as? Well, like driving around the corner to pick up some ice cream. Let's take a look at 30 miles per hour. In relation to Newton's second law of motion, one can say that force is the time rate of change of momentum. Momentum being the product of mass times velocity. The time rate of change of velocity is defined as the acceleration. So, F equals MA. MA, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll buy that, yeah. Yeah, that's common knowledge. What's, What's it mean? mean? It means the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. You're saying... The force that you're interested in is related to both speed and weight. In the rapid deceleration of a car crash, a highly inelastic event, I mean, we're talking about enormous force. If a 15-pound baby and a 150-pound adult both slow down at the same rate, as in hitting a wall doing 30 miles per hour, the force produced by the adult is 10 times the force of the baby because the adult has 10 times the mass of the baby. Now, if the child is on the adult's lap and they're both unbelted, the child will be crushed by the force of the adult as well. A force similar to dropping a 300-pound weight from a height of 20 feet. Ouch. Of course, it makes all the difference in the world if those forces are absorbed across the length of the body by the restraining action and protection of properly used child seats, airbags, and safety belts. No, 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 no safety belts. That's the whole point. We're going to help people who don't wear their safety belts learn how to deal with those kind of forces. We're already experts at that. First, we'll see what it looks like with belts. Those guys have it easy. Now that's more like it. I can almost taste the windshield du jour. Obviously, most of the force is focused either on the chest and head from the steering column, or on the face meeting the windshield and dashboard. 
Of course, as you can see here, an unbelted child is much more vulnerable, even capable of being ejected from the vehicle. I've become a hood ornament a few times myself. Well, I guess the best place to start is at the top. If you can't protect the head, it doesn't make much sense to protect the rest. You don't have to tell us. We kiss glass every day. I'm sure you know how it feels, but it's much worse when you have brains. And that about does it for the knees and lower leg. Of course, we've only been dealing with the force of a frontal collision. I don't know what you're going to do about factoring in the prospects of side collisions, rear-enders, or rollovers. And if you're going fast enough, even a safety belt might not save you. But I'm going to leave that up to you, because i got to go. Feel free to check the data. And just turn everything off before you leave. Good luck. And how are we going to deal with those other things, Vince? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Pop this video in, lad. Oh, this is Hall of Fame material we got here. Isn't that the legendary Walter? Which one? The one being thrown from the car and crushed. I don't know. It's kind of hard to see his face or what's left of it. I'd recognize him anywhere. He had great technique. Just look at that three-quarter flail with a half twist. Yeah, the guy had style. Whatever happened to him? Uh, ran out of spare parts. Speaking of which, we've got some shopping to do. Hey, Charlie. You want to go for a ride? Out there on the street with real cars? Well, yeah. A little non-impact driving for a change. Okay. <laughs> Look at me. What have I got to lose? Well, the basket's not going anywhere, but if something happens, what's going to stop my head from entering a bowling league? Oh, yeah, sorry. Hey, La, uh, grab me one of those child seats out of the trunk. I'm going to set this child door lock so it won't open from the inside. You know, in case one of your hands grabs the door handle by accident. Here you go. Hmm. Mm, a booster seat. No, that won't work. Mm, the infant seat might work. Nah. Oh, okay, let's use this one. Hey, thanks. That's better. Feels funny putting these on, doesn't it? Yeah, a lot of people don't do it because it takes too much time. Whoa! <laughs> really threw me off schedule. Took a whole 6.2 seconds out of my day. Say, uh, Vince, where are we going? We need some supplies to run a few tests. Meanwhile, you just ran a red light. Really? You know, this isn't a test track, Vince. We're not the only ones on the road out here. Matter of fact, we're not even on the road! Oh, hey, I, I was just stopped by a few feet. Vince! Relax, lad. You're buckled up for a change, aren't you? That's no reason to drive like a dump. Well, here we are. First stop, memory lane. Hey, Charlie, you okay back there? Compared to what? We'll be right back, Charlie. Uh, grab me a size ten and a half foot, will you? Yeah, if you happen to see one. And uh, maybe a couple of rotator cuffs and a ball joint, and I could use a new kneecap. Something with the elbow would be good. Hey, Lar. You know all the excuses people have for not wearing their safety belts? Well, I think I just found a great place to file. We could get a good deal on safety belts here. These look like they've never been used. Uh, who needs them? After all, just about every car already has them. Protecting the people that don't use them, that's the point. You keep your eye out for more springs. 
Why bother, Vince? I mean, what about passive restraint systems like automatic safety belts and airbags and stuff? Hey, if every car had them, that'd be great, but they don't yet. Besides, you still need to wear your safety belt with an airbag in order to be safe. So while there are still people riding around unprotected, Larry, I plan to do something about it. Yeah, right, like donate our vacation. Hey, Larry, isn't this fun, being in the research end, R&D? R and D. I'd rather have R and R, like a week in Acapulco. I'm telling you, Lair, the first line of defense for the unbelted motorist is a super strong pair of arms to brace against the impact. I keep asking them to turn up my hydraulic biceps pressure, but they never do. Why? 300 pounds, Vince. Because this needs to be accurate, don't you remember? This approximates the force involved in a simple, everyday, 30 mile per hour crash with somebody our size. Five, four, three, two, one, impact! Sure hope it works this time, so we can move on to a test without 300 pound weights. No sweat, lad. We got all weekend. Maybe we should have started with the head. gentlemen may I have your uh, attention please I know how busy you all are so I want to thank you for attending this emerge uh, uh, significant well in, in, important meeting <laughs> Larry why don't, why don't you tell them what it is that you have for them to uh, take care <clears throat> you're probably wondering why I've called you all here today I've always wanted to say that oh, anyway on. really uh, my partner Vince and I have been working on a top secret project which we would like to present to you at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Survival Wear by Vincent. Designed to withstand the enormous forces of contemporary accidents, Survival Wear is today's answer to tomorrow's problems. For the non-safety belt user, this almost affordable 12-piece suit offers near comfort and full shock absorbency along with hidden features such as pop-up reflectors in case you're thrown from the car at night into the path of oncoming vehicles. And setting the pace by combining fashion with function, magnetic polarizers. When synchronized with other survival wear passengers, these strong magnetic fields will serve to repel, thereby reducing those lethal passenger-to-passenger -passenger collisions. Massive cranial padding says, hey, I'm ready for anything from windshield to highway surface. Constructed from materials of the utmost durability, survival wear is designed to withstand any kind of abuse a dashboard can dish out. But you're probably asking yourself, what happens if I roll end over end down a steep embankment? Well, we've got you covered. Survival wear is designed to inflate in the event of any collision.
Are you okay? If you consider being a total and absolute failure okay, then I suppose I'm just great. Hey, come on, buddy. Pull yourself together. You gave it your best. Maybe next week. No, no way. I've had it. I've had it. I guess some people are just destined to go one on one with the old dashboard. I don't agree, Vince. Nobody has to be a glass kisser if they don't want to be. How's that? There's still one simple thing anyone can do. <laughs> we are the dummies crashing on the roof, busting our heads just for you. My name is Vince. The job makes me sore. If you'd buckle up, I wouldn't do it no more. They call me Larry. I'm a dummy, too. When you don't buckle up, the dummy is you. Buckle that belt. That's one thing you say, yet we know we're not wrong. When you go for a ride, put your safety belt on. Hey, class. Um, maybe Mr. Wilcox will still give us a couple of days off. Um, or maybe an afternoon. An extended lunch. Uh, coffee break. Coffee break.